What's going on, everybody? Thank you so much for joining. Hope you're having a great one today. As always, we got a fun one today from X06. We are taking a look at 1 6 figures. Uh, so that is Quark, for those of you that do not know. Um, I am very, very excited for this. Quark is one of my absolute favorite Star, Star Trek characters. Um, really, he's probably one of my favorite sci fi characters, just in general, um, as far as like returning significant characters go. Uh, I've pretty much always been a fan of this guy. Um, interestingly with him, I'd be curious. I feel like he might be, uh, the character with the most, uh, different appearances. Um, I'm probably wrong about that, but he's been in Next Generation, Deep Space Nine. He was in the pilot for Voyager. Uh, he's in one of the animated shows, I think Lower Decks. Um, and then technically he was in one of the movies as well. I think it was deleted scenes from Insurrection. Uh, so he's been around. I'm sure, you know, Picard, all of those other folks have been in quite a few as well. Um, but I would be kind of curious to know uh, if anybody actually outdoes him. Now, if you're wondering what all that rattling around was, he does come with these handy dandy corner protectors, uh, which I greatly appreciate X06 for doing. Uh, I got this fellow through Big Bad Toy Store. He is sold out there, uh, but you can still find him in a few other online retailers. I think Entertainment Earth has him in stock. Um, I think you might even still be able to pre-order him from Sideshow, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but he does seem to be selling out of a lot of places quick, and from what I've noticed with the X06 stuff... With the exception of a few kind of odd characters, uh, most of them seem to sell out and then quickly shoot up in price. Uh, so if you are a Quark fan like myself, you may want to try and get one sooner rather than later, just so you don't have to pay the horrible uh, retail markup that you inevitably will. Uh, now that box is great. Uh, very good job just kind of capturing the likeness there. I don't really know who else they're going to do out of DS9. Um, honestly, I'd probably get O'Brien if they made him. Um, that would that would probably be it. I, I'd consider a Gul Dukat. He would be uh, another one that's pretty high on my list of favorites from that show, at least. Um, I do have the Cisco, so I've at least got him covered. Yeah, tape was already cracked for me. Um, I'm actually kind of curious, did they... T so this is interesting, and it's stupid, but they have a seal there. <laughs> I'm an idiot. All right, that explains a lot. So he's got a slip cover. Uh, I often make it known that I am not the, uh, the sharpest knife in the drawer. Uh, there's just a perfect example of it. Most people would do things like edit it and remove that, but hey, you know, whatever. There we go. Uh, now, this guy was a little different than Cisco and some of the other ones, because there is only one version of him available. So you don't have to worry about getting, like, a deluxe or a special edition or the... I forget what they call the... Uh, I think they're, like, essential edition is the one where it's like basically just the figure and nothing else. Um, pretty much if you want Quark, this is going to be the one to get. <laughs> Which is nice because it does make things relatively easy. Uh, now he should come with a bunch of fun different accessories, which we will certainly take a look at. He is loaded up with bars of gold pressed latinum, which is nice. Um, kind of weird in some ways because a lot of times the... Uh, Gold press latinum is kind of like a currency that they use, or I guess it's exactly like a currency they use, but oftentimes they will buy stuff with a number of bars. So he might ask for 50 bars of gold press latinum, which if the bars are different sizes, that doesn't really make a ton of sense. Um, but I digress. Honestly, that head sculpt is fantastic. Look at those ears. Uh, when I was a kid, I really liked the Ferengi just because they have big ears, and I myself do as well. So I was like, hey, they're like me. Um, so he kind of always appealed to me just as a as a youngin' for that reason. Um, and then when I got older, just running a bar and kind of being a bit of a money-grubbing sleazeball, I, I 
genuinely thought he was a really, really well designed and cool character. Um, the outfit that they gave him is amazing. Um, this is actually kind of his more famous uh, uniform, I suppose you could say. He does do several outfit changes throughout the series. Um, you do get a little restriction and movement there, not that that's the end of the world. Um, but this is the one that's kind of most known for him. It's what he wore in the uh, the Voyager pilot. It's what he wore early in Deep Space Nine. It's what he wore on Lower Decks. Um, so this is kind of the one that you would know him for. Definitely nice job there. Um, really the one thing I could say negatively about it is you do get a little restriction in the movement. But uh, to be fair, he rarely, if ever, has any action scenes. I think there's like two or three episodes where you get to see him do anything exciting. Uh, I'm pretty sure he does in Magnificent Ferengi. That's one of the better episodes of, of Deep Space Nine, in my opinion. Decent amount of movement there. Uh, but most of the time, he's just kind of running around ducking for cover. Uh, he's a scoundrel. He's not much of a fighter. Uh, you do get a decent ab crunch there as well. Really pretty good mobility overall. Um, which, again, you're not... I mean, he doesn't really do too much, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, his shoes are super generic, which they probably were in the show. I've never actually paid attention to his footwear in it. But really, I feel like they could have... These are probably accurate, but I feel like they could have dolled them up a little bit, made them a little more spicy. I mean, if you look at the top part of them compared to the bottom, granted, he'd have a bar in front of him, so you wouldn't see him from the waist down, but still... Kind of strange. He did paint his fingernails, which is nice. That's kind of fun. We'll take a look at some of the other hands so we can see those up close. And if you want to kiss a Ferengi, by all means, there you go. Uh, you do get a hexagonal base. It's basically, I'm not going to pull it out because you can kind of see it there. It's the standard one that they do for the Exo 6 figures where it looks like the, uh, the stand of the uh, teleporter. And I lied. I am going to pull it out. Um, one thing I've noticed with a lot of these is they'll have two different sides, and I'm curious. Nope. Sometimes you can swap these out. Let's see here. Oh, did they give me another one down there? Well, you do get a slightly different one. So if you wanted to do that to match them up with all the others, you could certainly put that on top. But normally it's going to be that little transporter bay thing there. Mm, which way does that go? Good enough. Yeah, that's good enough too. All right, let's take a look at the stuff that he comes with. So this should be his Ferengi data pad, uh, which I was expecting to be a lot smaller. Um, oh, no, I lied. This, interesting. All right, so this is his book, is The Ferengi Rules of Acquisition. Um, <laughs> it's so... So dang cool. Uh, so one thing that's kind of like a running joke in the show is that he will often bring up the Ferengi rules of acquisition, um, which are kind of like the tenets and creed that they live by. Um, there's something like 380 of them. I don't remember. A very large number. Um, I know he had made one up at one point, which is like the final rule, which I'm curious if they've actually got it in here. It was something like when Morn leaves, the bar is closed. Yeah, sadly, not really anything you actually can read, but definitely neat. Certainly a fun little, uh, little accessory there. I was honestly thinking that would be the data pad, but I'm guessing... This just looks like a larger platinum bar. So this would be his little data pad. Which makes sense. I was expecting it to be a lot smaller. Hopefully it'll focus a little better. Let's try... Well, that's about as good as I can get it. There we go. And pretty cool. Shows the, uh, the layout of the station and all that good stuff. Definitely a fun little uh, little add-on for that. Um, this, I believe, 
This honestly looks more like the Naga staff, part of the Naga staff than anything. I'm not sh could be one of his writing utensils. I honestly don't know what this is supposed to be. Losing nerd cred, but that's okay. It almost looks like it would be one of his, the things that he writes with. Whoops. That'll be one that I have to look at the instructions if there are any. Maybe it says somewhere in the box. Eh, we'll dig around for it. And then you do get a ton of different bars of latinum. I am really curious what this one is, though. Because that thing is just massive. And it's definitely supposed to be you know, a bigger piece of the gold press latinum, but it's a chunky boy. I didn't think we were getting any that are that big. Really, there's not too much to it. I was hoping it would focus a little better. There you go. You can kind of see some etchings into it. Nothing really special. Um, you could potentially uh, make your own and make it a little shinier, all that good stuff. Uh, but pretty cool nonetheless. And then I did want to take a look at at least one of his extra hands just so we could see the detail that they did on these because they did do a really, really good job with them. Just fantastic overall. And that should be to help him hold stuff. He doesn't have a weird wart. Um, so I'm guessing this guy, maybe. That's very strange. Nope. I was thinking that might have been a magnet. Hmm. Well, that there is another mystery. Certainly doesn't have it on others, so it's definitely for holding something. I'm just not entirely sure what. Let's see. Is there anything in here would clip to? Aha! Uh -huh. I don't really know how, but there is certainly a little spot there it can fit into which you would think maybe for holding it but don't really see how there'd be any way to do it also a sad update now this might i can't imagine it's supposed to be like that i'm assuming it just uh unstuck from that little back end there. I am genuinely stumped. I mean, I would assume it would be to, to kind of clip it into there. But there's no way it's stable enough to actually hold it. So I'm not too sure what the thought process was. I mean, it's also possible that I'm just stupid and that's not what it's for at all. Um, I don't want to rule that out. But it looks like it should clip in there. It's the right size. It would kind of make sense. Whoops. But no luck. I am definitely bummed that this whole thing slid out. I don't think that was supposed to happen, but... Eh, not the end of the world. Now it's just a cool trapper keeper. It works out well. Um, so overall, I'm real confused about that. A uh, little disappointed in that. Not entirely sure what that is. Otherwise, I love it. <laughs> so realistically, in the grand scheme of it all, uh, this is pretty much what I was paying for. I don't really care about the accessories. I mainly wanted this. And the only real disappointment I have in them is just the uh, kind of non-impressive footwear. And that's 
a small complaint in the grand scheme of things. He's going to look cool, posed up with a bunch of my other sci-fi stuff. Might have him hang out with some Jawas. Who knows? Seems like a good way to go. Uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap this one up for now. I am going to do a little bit of research, see if I could figure out what this little pen thingy is, and maybe try and figure out what to do with the peg and the hand and all that good stuff. Who knows? We'll see how it goes. As always, thank you all so much. We'll see you next time.